Hello. In this presentation, you're going to see how easy it is to deploy and scale .NET applications on Heroku, and how to scale real-time multi-user experiences, leveraging the popular SignalR protocol, leveraging both Postgres and Redis services also hosted on Heroku. Before we get into the demos, let's quickly walk through some of the benefits of running your .NET applications on Heroku. Firstly, .NET is fully integrated with our amazing Heroku DX experience. So whether you're programming in C Sharp, F Sharp, or even Visual Basic, you'll feel right at home. Heroku automatically understands and builds and deploys your .NET applications, applying smart defaults to simplify your workflow. It's also fully covered by our Heroku support program. Secondly, you'll feel right at home. We're making sure that all the port configurations for your ASP.NET applications are managed, we're also making sure that all of the executable project types such as console, worker, and web are all fully detected by Heroku and configured accordingly, including self-contained, ready-to-run, and highly optimized ahead-of-time compilation applications. Finally, of course, .NET applications have access to all of the Heroku managed services and tools. Using Heroku pipelines to manage staging and deploying your application through into production, all of your tests are run automatically using the Heroku CI feature, where we support major .NET testing frameworks, of course. We can also preview your pull requests with automated disposable environments. And finally, we can automate DB migrations, scale automatically, do rollbacks when needed, and much, much more. So let's take a look at our first demo. Let's start this demo by taking a look at a very familiar command for .NET developers, the .NET CLI. And as I mentioned, Heroku supports solutions and multiple projects of different types within that solution. So let's go ahead and create a solution and add some projects to it. So let's get started by using the uh, solution new command. And we're going to add a console app, a worker app, and a Blazor app to uh, this solution. And that's affected the files on the left hand side here. So we can see the new folders representing the projects have been created. And we're going to create a Git uh, repository and add all those files to it. And then use the Heroku create command to create an environment on Heroku uh, in which to deploy our application or solution to. So let's use Heroku create for that. Okay, excellent, that was run. And now for the git push Heroku main. So if you're not familiar with Heroku, this is where the magic happens. This takes all of the contents of the folder and the project that you see in front of us and uses our build packs framework to determine what type of language it is. And uh, you'll see in the console output in a moment here, it recognizes this as a .NET application. And then we'll start compiling and building uh, the application to deploy to the service. So, yep, it's recognized it's a .NET application. And the SDK has been detested. It started to download the appropriate .NET SDK as specified in your uh, solution files. So uh, now we've finished compressing it. We've finished building it. We're now compressing uh, and making it available to Heroku to execute. And with that, it's now deployed to Heroku. So these are obviously very small uh, projects, but you can get a sense of just how quickly you can take something from your local machine and deploy it to the cloud with Heroku with one simple command. So we've got three projects here. Let's take a look at the output of each of them and how they're running. So first of all, we'll use the Heroku open command, and that's going to open uh, the web app that we deployed, the Blazor app, and we'll hopefully see the, uh, the default Hello World application. The Blazor app is running. Hello world indeed. Fantastic. Okay, so that's our Blazor app running. Uh, what about our uh, worker application? Well, the worker application can be scaled. So it has been deployed, but we're going to use the Heroku PS command to scale that uh, up to one instance. Obviously, you can use different uh, configurations to scale it uh, beyond just one. But we're just using one today, so that's scaled. And we can confirm now what processes are running on Heroku by just using the Heroku PS command. And uh, that should show us both the web uh, processor is running as well as this uh, new worker process, which is indeed the case. Fantastic. There's our worker process and there's our web process. Keep in mind here, we didn't do anything Heroku specific on the left here. We just used git push Heroku main. It inferred how to configure and set up these uh, projects and services in Heroku. So let's go and have a look at the Heroku uh, logs. And we'll use the Heroku log tail command for that. 
and we'll see uh, the output from the worker process just basically polling, waiting for uh, requests to be received. So, yep, there it is. You can see that moving along nicely. Okay, and finally, that console application that we deployed. So to do that, we need to use the Heroku run command because, of course, we want to run the console app in its deployed state. Uh, so that console app uh, can be done run rather with the Heroku run command and a direct path to the console app where it's been uh, built. So that's spinning up some dedicated dyno compute just for this app. It runs the app and then shuts that compute down. So, of course, this is just the ubiquitous Hello World version of the console app that .NET created. But you can see here evidence that it ran simply on Heroku without any problem whatsoever. So this is a first demo really taking you through the basics and hopefully giving you a sense that if you understand the .NET CLI, you know what a solution is and multiple projects, deploying to Heroku is an absolute breeze. So let's get started with our next demo. Now Heroku also has a getting started or template application and we're going to deploy that using the Visual Studio Code add-on for Heroku. So this basically does something very similar to what uh, we saw me doing early with git push Heroku main but it's actually just doing it with the help of a Visual Studio extension. So let's go ahead and click deploy and deploy this application. Okay, fantastic. It's now finished deploying and uh, we can certainly see on the left hand side if we refresh this our uh, formations in terms of which uh, processes are running, our dynos and also our add-ons and there are no add-ons at present. So this is just a regular Blazor application. Let's go ahead and open up this Blazor app and we can click this button here in the Visual Studio Code add-on. And yep, yeah, this is it. This is the getting started with .NET on Heroku sample application. So we can do a little bit more with this application before I move on to our final demonstration, and that is add Postgres to it. So let's go back to uh, Visual Studio. And to do that, we're going to use the Search Elements Marketplace in our Visual Studio add-on here. Now, there is a CLI to do this, but I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to search for add-ons in uh, the Elements Marketplace. So we can see here the Heroku Postgres add-on. So let's go and install that and choose our plan, which is going to be the Essential Zero plan, and click Submit. And that's going to go and provision automatically a Heroku Postgres database and attach that to our application. You can see on the left-hand side um, an update there showing that that provisioning is occurring. Okay, we can see the Postgres database has now been provisioned. The next thing, of course, to do is to create some database schema in it. And to do that, we're going to run the Heroku run command, which is going to run the migration scripts to generate the schema in the database. Okay, and we can see that it's now generated the movie table, which is what we expected for this sample. So that's a great way of running your migration scripts manually if you need to. So let's go and take a look at uh, what effect that's had, because there is a feature in the Getting Started application to manage your movies. So let's take a look at the movies uh, page on the Getting Started application. So here we can create a new movie, and we've got uh, Terminator, and I think it was around January 18th, 1985, something like that. And genre, obviously, sci-fi. And price, $10. Create that, and sure enough, there it is. We can even edit our movies. And that's all information now maintained in the Postgres database. Fantastic. So it's a great way of exploring how you can add Postgres storage to your .NET applications using our Getting Started application. So in the next and final demo, I'm going to be using SignalR, which as most of you hopefully know if you're .NET developers, is a really simple, powerful technology for creating real-time experiences across multiple users. But then it also requires some persistent storage to maintain and keep everything in sync, especially if you're scaling your application horizontally. So here we are in Visual Studio with our final sample application. We're going to deploy this application just as we've done before. We're going to give it a, a name this time. It's going to be called Heroku Notepad. And we're going to set off a deployment for that application. Now what's interesting about this deployment is I have configured our uh, app.json file so that it's actually going to provision uh, some add-ons as well, the Postgres database and uh, a Redis instance, both of which are Heroku add-ons, our key value store and our Heroku Postgres store are being provisioned. And uh, as you might expect, we've also configured in this application uh, the hub 
uh, configuration for the notepad. So we were able to represent how we add notes and update notes and delete notes and so forth. And our program recognizes uh, on startup the Redis URL, which is provisioned uh, by Heroku, and duly configures uh, the SignalR um, services accordingly by attaching those uh, connection details. And of course, similarly, uh, we've got the database URL doing the same to set up the uh, database service, so we can actually store the notes and they don't uh, they don't get lost. So uh, we'll just wait for that to finish deploying. We'll get a, an update over here on the left-hand side uh, from uh, the Heroku Visual Studio Code add-on when that is completed. Okay, that uh, deployment has completed and we can see our formations. We've got our dynos and, of course, our add-ons. So as I mentioned, those add-ons have been automatically configured because we set up that up in our app.json. So our application is basically now ready to uh, test out. So let's uh, go and use the terminal to get hold of the URL for our application. To do that, we'll use the Heroku info command. Copy that and paste the URL both into the left-hand side and the right hand side and we see obviously the same application as I start using this application on the left to add a sticky note move that one up a little bit yep we can see the sticky note moves around so the other user can see it and indeed this user could move that around as well and start adding another sticky note and uh, we can change the name of this one to note one and this one to note two and give it a description if we want Roku now supports.net and you can see the description updating so it is working as we expected signal r is really an amazing technology to keep uh, clients up to date and in sync with everything but heroku is needed here to provide an environment in order to create a backing store to synchronize multiple instances of the application across using Redis and obviously we're using Postgres here as a persistent storage for all of the, the notes. Let's take a closer look at the application via the Heroku dashboard. Here we can see how easy it is to adjust scaling both horizontally and vertically. From a vertical perspective, we can adjust our dyno types, including Performance M, Performance L, and XL and 2XL. We can also adjust horizontal scaling easily by moving this slider from left to right. And because our .NET application is using a shared resource, the Heroku Key Value Store, our Redis instance, all instances of our application are kept in sync even as we scale multiple instances of the application. Finally, let's take a look at our Heroku Postgres database and query for some of those notes we just created. So here we can see our Heroku Data Dashboard. And from here, we can see utilization of our database, its overall health, and also our data clips feature, which lets us perform some queries against the database. So we'll go ahead and create a data clip. Data clips can be reused, so we can give them a name. So we'll just call this one Query Notes. And the query we want to run here is just a simple select over the notes that have been uh, stored by using the application. So we'll hit Save and Run there. And there, of course, we can see the notes that we just entered in the application. So this is a really easy to use feature, but very popular amongst our customers to be able to share information from databases. We can even create charts and export via CSV and JSON from these views. It's never been a more exciting time to be a .NET developer, with .NET approaching its 10-year anniversary this November. Heroku is the perfect partner for managing your .NET applications, keeping you focused on the task that matters the most, building amazing experiences. Thank you very much.